Hello everyone, this is my personal unit of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and we are going to revisit the gaming test of this phone because Samsung just dropped the update to unlock it to its full potential. So in our full review of the Galaxy S22 Ultra, we did say that we wished Samsung would give us a toggle to enable this phone to go to its maximum performance. I just wish that there's an option for us to tap on it and make it go full blast. And with the recent GOS controversy and whatnot, Samsung finally gave us the option to unlock it via the settings menu. But the settings menu is a little bit weird. So I'm gonna show you how I test the phone's performance from the beginning until the end. And this is also my first time testing the performance of this phone after the new update. So first and foremost, I'm going to remove the case because I don't want the case to impact any of the thermals. So, and this case is also compatible with MagSafe so you can check it out at the top right corner there. We just did a review of this case not too long ago and I absolutely love this case because of the MagSafe compatibility. So once the case is removed, I'll just put it here and now the phone is naked. I have a screen protector at the front but that doesn't affect anything. And the second step is to enable GPU watch in the settings menu which you can watch our video at the top right corner there where we compare between GPU watch and Perf Z. So what we're gonna do is to head into the about phone menu and then click into software options, click many times on the build number, then it will ask me for my pattern, I'm just gonna put it in real quick. And once we've done that, we can scroll down some more into the developers option scroll all the way to the bottom and find an option called GPU Watch which is located somewhere higher here GPU Watch so we enable it again I'm just gonna leave everything in default because it is already good enough so we'll hit back out and then we need to go into Game Launcher I'm using Genshin Impact in our test here because this game is well known and it is also the most demanding game that you can download on your smartphone right now to test it out and you can also of course download it for your consoles your pc whatsoever so the latest samsung update brought up this option where you can go into the more here click on game booster find the labs menu and then you can see this is where you can enable the alternate game performance management. So it says it uses an experimental game performance management system that may improve game performance but it will tend to cause heating. I'm gonna leave this off for now so I'm just gonna get into the game and see how it actually works. So as you can see we're in the game right now and the graphical settings that we're using is actually in the highest preset and at 60 fps. So the game kind of runs okay right now, as you can see here, the graphical fidelity isn't the best since you can see the resolution is 1372 by 640 It's kind of low and at certain areas you can see some jaggies in terms of the pixels. Um, it's not that ideal, but we can do something to improve that. Okay. But before we do that, we can see that the FPS is about 60 FPS all the time, so no worries there in terms of gaming performance. But I want to increase the resolution here, so what I can do is to swipe out here. Um, we'll go into here, click this button here, and then we can see Game Booster Plus. This is actually the game's plugin, I've already installed it beforehand. You can find it in the link in the description below, you can just download it from the Galaxy Store. And then install Game Booster Plus, it says if I turn it on I have to restart all my games. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna skip this and then what I'm gonna do is to click on Genshin Impact and then what I'm gonna do next is to swipe up, click on this high performance, highest graphical quality, maximum frame rate and then I'm just gonna click apply to all games because why not, click change, done. So now I can launch the game. And now you can see the resolution is much higher. Also Genshin Impact takes quite a while to boot up so yeah. So now that we're in the game back again, we can see the resolution is a lot higher at 1853 by 864 pixels and the frame rate starts to tank at about 45 FPS 
Remember, before we set the Game Booster Plus to go for the maximum graphical setting, highest graphical setting, we got about 60 FPS consistently at this area, but now we're only getting about 40, 45 FPS, which is a major drop by just increasing the resolution. So, what we can do to further improve the performance is thanks to this brand new update today, and it gives us the option to fully unlock the game's performance. So what I'm gonna do is to, once again, shut down Genshin Impact and then I'm just gonna head into the game launcher once again go into the game booster here scroll down to labs enable this new option that is just only available after the latest update so enable that go back out and then launch Genshin Impact once again so now we restarted Genshin Impact and we can see the FPS rises once again. This time we're getting about 50, 55 ish FPS. It fluctuates quite a lot, but I think this time around the FPS is a lot higher than just now. So I'm just gonna play around here. It definitely feels a lot smoother already. So I'm just gonna go out and do some daily tasks to see how it actually feels. So I don't know why this part it dropped to about 30 something FPS. It's not due to texture loading times because it already had that initial starter. So the texture should be loaded in but now I'm just getting about 30 FPS consistently. Maybe it's because the phone heated up but uh, I'm just gonna use the thermal camera a bit later after I finish this guy off. So I'm just gonna whip out the thermal camera for a while. I can already feel the phone starting to heat up especially around the top and bottom of the frame. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little and thermal camera here we go. The boot times of this thing is a bit slow so we'll wait for a while. So as you can see now after we unlocked everything, for some reason the frame rate goes back up again. Maybe it's due to the game issue. As you can see here the CPU utilization is at the low 70s but the GPU is less than 15% so we still have a lot of headroom. I don't know why the game just don't utilize everything to make it go 60 FPS consistently. Um, yeah, that's kind of funny. So the thermal camera has booted up. So let me just take a quick measurement here. We can see the bottom of the phone is rather cool. But when we go up higher, we can see where the chip is supposed to be. This is where the chip is supposed to be. And the temperature is at about 40 degrees on the screen. That's actually quite good. It's not hot at all. So we flip the phone around. And we can see that the temperature is... Remember, the chip is right here. You can see there's an outline there that's the hottest. So back of the phone is at about 35 degrees Celsius. And yeah, the back of the phone is not hot at all. What about the frame of the phone? Oh, this is a bit hotter. So we can see it's at about 41, 42 degrees Celsius around the frame. So yeah, my suspicion is correct. The frame did get hot a lot. But the game though, still runs really fine. I mean, credit to Samsung where it's still, this is still considered a lab feature, which means they are still gonna test how to optimize the game better without excessive heating because we tried some other phones with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that heated up very much but they don't get performance as good as this so yeah I think Samsung did a good job in response to the controversy and also being able to push up an update to fix that issue that quickly and this is also a very effective fix I would say so yeah I'm just gonna play Genshin Impact for a while more just to see if the temperature increases.
Okay, so I've been playing Genshin Impact for about half an hour right now. So I'm just gonna use the thermal camera again to see if there's any changes to the temperature. I doubt there is because the performance is about the same. Sometimes you get about 33-ish FPS in the more intense locations like cities. But when we're out and about in the open, then the FPS will increase again. That's kind of normal. So I would have to say the performance did increase. But there are some stuttering here and there. I'm not sure why that happens. Maybe it's because, again, this thing is not optimized yet since it still is a lab feature. But uh, I would still say it's good for Samsung to really give us an option to enable the full performance. So, yeah, let me just hit out into the forest and see if there's any increment in the FPS. And no, there isn't, at least not yet. I can feel the back of the phone heating up again. But anyway, thermal camera, once again, we can see that the temperature at the bottom here is 36. At the top here, again, 40-ish degrees Celsius. Oh, it did increase a bit to about 42.5, 42.7. I saw it was 44 degrees just now. Maybe that was a uh, misreporting but about 43 degrees Celsius at the hottest spot right here. And at the back of the phone, how are we doing right now? We got about mm, 38, 38 degrees Celsius, about that. And the coldest part is at about 32. So, okay. What about the frame of the phone? Because just now, as we said earlier, the frame of the phone was the hottest. So we can see the frame is at about ooh, 44, 45 degrees Celsius, 48. Uh, it might be due to the reflective surface that it's not reporting that properly, but about 40 something degrees. But yeah, it does feel hot around the frame, but it's not burning hot since it's only a small surface area here. So yeah, it did increase in terms of performance, but I would still say there are some potential here to further increase the performance since you see GPU utilization is always below 15% but only the CPU is utilized mostly. And that's it, that's the full gaming test of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 after the new update with the potential to unlock it to its maximum performance level. And I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something on how to enable that setting. So yeah, we'll see you next time. Remember, we're using GPU Watch to monitor all of the information shown on the screen right here. All of the details will be linked down in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, shut up, Beidou.